Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Sometimes the best advice you can give someone is to slap some sense into them. Quit literally. But since we can't resort to violence, instead, we need to tell them to move the hell on. Take their rose-colored glasses off. Help them open their eyes and see the truth. Let's shake some sense into OP today on our space. Ex-girlfriend cheated on me with a co-worker. Any tips or just some advice? Anything? So my ex-girlfriend of three years recently cheated on me with her co-worker. When I first met her, she had nothing. No job, barely any money, and no car. She was living with her mother until she got kicked out. This isn't the first time she's jumped from house to house with family members or friends. So I took her in to live with me at my mother's house. We've been dating for about nine months when this happened, but we were already very close and we loved each other. I helped pick her up from school and give her a place to stay. When she had no job or money, I fought every day with my job to get her to work at my job and she eventually got hired. I helped teach her how to drive and bring her to do her driver's test to get her license. I was there to bring her to her graduation when she really had no one. Eventually, when she was getting financially stable, she wanted to get a car and who helped her find a car? Me. It wasn't the best car, but it got her from point A to point B. During our three years together, we obviously had arguments and ups and downs, but that's normal. She also was very bipolar and didn't use much manners with people like I did. So sometimes I thought to myself that she's kind of different from me. During the relationship, there was a lot of arguments and she was that person that didn't like the silent treatment or didn't like to see me ignore her when we needed to cool down. She would keep poking me and provoking me to keep arguing with her, then all of a sudden get really emotional to the point where she threatened to kill herself if I left her. I would admit there was a time I gave her a one-inch punch to the arm because I was dealing with a spine injury and she took my phone away from me when I didn't want to argue. I just wanted to look at TikToks so we didn't argue, but she hates the silent treatment. She grabbed me and even dug her nails into my skin so I can let go of the phone. She pulled me and refused to give my phone back while I have so much pain from my spine and sciatic nerve. I wanted to just ignore the situation let us cool down, but I never ever beat her or abused her like she said I did. I regret what I did and always apologize to her and to God. Anyways, fast forward to the situation. She ended up getting depressed and upset from our job because it got so bad and I agreed with her. So she ended up finding a new job and I was proud of her. She would work overnight and come back home in the morning but it started getting a little weird because most couples don't care about not shaving their legs or making sure they're very clean and good looking at times when they're very close. But she made sure she looked amazing and made sure to shave almost every day. Mind you, this is a warehouse shop so there's no point in looking amazing there. It's been a month since she started working there and all of a sudden when she started working every day overnight and always had some excuse or some story on why she's going to work early or coming home late, she looked guilty. But I trusted her so I didn't question it. That was until one day, I started getting these gut feelings like really bad and I decided to check our tablet and see messages of her talking to another guy in a very flirting way, even talking about can't wait to see you later, cuddle with you, and even going out on dates. When I found this out, my world just shattered and I couldn't believe it. At the time, I was trying to contact her from work, but guess what? She wasn't at work, she was hanging out with him. So my dumb self at the time got upset and gave her PC a good punch, which broke some things out of anger and confusion. She laughed at me on the phone when I was heartbroken, thinking of all the memories, vacations, our bucket lists. A week later after kicking her out, she wanted to talk and we did, but she showed no sympathy and kept denying the cheating and was saying that she needs to love herself right now and that the relationship was getting toxic. I wasn't showing her the honeymoon stage anymore and the reason why this all happened was because of me. But mind you, the weeks before and all the time I took her to sporting events, out to eat, out to the movies, etc., almost every day, even after having surgery. She ended up moving on with this person who was younger than me and has a sports car, which she likes all of a sudden, who she barely knew for a month, and she told him that I was abusive and that I never loved her and she lost weight because she didn't eat, but she never made anything for herself. It was always me making her food or making her smoothies. My mother lived with us to see all of this and didn't like the way she treated me. My ex ended up telling me this guy supposedly was there for her and showed her that he will help fix her and never hurt her. Not only me, but all of her friends and her friends cut ties with her because they knew how she was and what she did was disrespectful to all of us. They also seen the proof. I eventually blocked her on everything and she still lies about things with this guy, even though there's proof. Even told him that I'm still currently messaging her at night when I'm the one who blocked her and I have all the screenshots of her trying to get to me. So what do you guys think? Am I at fault for this happening? 
Asked for an opinion, the community's got one. Gerbil in my butthole says, Ghost, block, and delete from your life. You should have left her in the streets where you found her. It sounds like there's a bunch of issues happening here. It seems like it was a toxic all around. We can't try to fix people. That's not love. When we try to fix others, we're secretly trying to fix ourselves and make it seem like we're worth loving. Like, we're proving we deserve love or something. Reality check. You deserve love with or without trying to fix someone. You just need to love yourself first. If you had, you wouldn't have stayed and put up with all of that and risked your peace of mind for so long. Update. Update and aftermath that tried to heal ended up facing BS from the affair partner now. This is an update from my original post I made a month ago. You can view it on my page. Sorry for being so long. So after D-Day two months ago, I came to terms with reality and understood my worth and why I chased the cheater. The first month I was really depressed and confused. I never felt like this before and wished I had a time machine to fast forward because the pain and thoughts would haunt me. I wasn't eating, I couldn't sleep, and I wasn't motivated. I wanted to speak to her even though what she did was bad. I obviously really loved her and wanted to get some closure at the least. My dumb self was texting her a lot the first few days telling her I'm sorry if I didn't hold her hand too much or bought her flowers every week or something. She didn't really text back, she only texted back on her own time and was annoyed. A few days later, she wanted to meet up and talk, and we did. I was excited and also scared. She basically didn't talk about her cheating. She went and talked about how I didn't treat her with the love she wanted, that I didn't like to kiss her in public, and she wished we had the honeymoon stage still even after three years. She said it was toxic and that she gave up on herself and needs time to love herself. I'm hearing what she has to say, but she's not talking about the cheating. She still said I was overreacting and it was nothing. I've seen also that day, she also had already changed her phone password, which was our date, and changed her lock screen photo of us to something else. After all that, I still was curious about her, but she again didn't like talking with me for some reason. I would tell her how I was depressed, can't sleep, and eat. I said all those, and she told me, See, now you're how I felt like 24-7. I don't want to sound like an a-hole and say that she's lying about her emotions, but she was always hyper, happy playing her video games, and then loving me later every day. She seemed normal to me and others. She went on to tell me at least I have a place to stay because I kicked her out for cheating, and she's supposedly sleeping in her car in parking lots. I told her and also my parents told her that she can sleep in a different room at her house because it's dangerous outside alone in a parking lot. She refused and said she's fine. I knew her day off and told her let's meet again to at least sit down and talk. But she refused and said not to text her that day because she's going to be sleeping all day and needs rest. That day comes and I didn't believe she would be resting so I ended up finding a video of her and the affair partner three states away at an event. I was again hurt. The same day also someone drove past the affair partner's house and saw her car there. So she had been staying with him this whole time instead of her lies about sleeping in her car in a parking lot. She told me the parking lot she would sleep in and I'd never seen her car there either. So I finally accepted it and moved on with so much pain. Throughout the month of her getting her belongings, she always had the affair partner in his car down my street and acted like we didn't see him. Even after what she did to me, I was still taking care of her pets. Until one day, I had enough of doing good things for her while she had the time of her life with the affair partner. I told her, get the rest of your stuff and leave me alone. She got upset and again bashed me for not ever helping her and that I never did anything for her. Even threatening to bring me to court if I found a better home for the pet. She continued to talk crap to me and then switched her attitude and begged me to watch the pet if I loved her. I said no, and she got pissed again, calling me names. She ended up getting the pet with the affair partner. Next month, she moved in with her mom, and all of a sudden I started getting messages from her on a different account, begging and saying she was sorry, saying that she's ready to get back together and wants to fix things now, and that she also has no relationship with the affair partner, but she said they still talk. She literally said please a million times every message. I ignored her because at that point, I turned my sadness into anger and motivation. I also knew she was probably saying all this because she was sleeping by herself this time, watching our pets, having to search for a place to live, and could be using me to help her. She was still at the affair partner, by the way. This went on for a month. She made fake accounts, emailed me, and tried reaching out to my friend saying she was depressed, even had her siblings message me, saying how can I just ignore her and throw it all away? Me? Throw it all away? Now, after her getting a place, she went completely silent. Found it weird. It's been weeks of silence and I felt like I could really move on. Until today, I got a message from the affair partner. I was annoyed when I seen that. I opened it, and the affair partner was talking crap, saying I should be upset. How he wants to hurt me for hurting and abusing her every day for years. Excuse me? I never physically abused her every day like he said. I'm not the type of person. I have sisters and would not like a man to mistreat them. 
He called me names, even saying he knows where I live and has so much info about me. He also mentioned even though he was young, he was more mature than me. He also bragged about being with her and getting laid. I was more pissed about her telling him lies that I was an abuser and that's all I did to her for years. Mind you, I live with my parents and siblings and they can vouch for me and they've seen firsthand everything. They were also shocked and pissed and knew how good we were when we were together. I told him respectfully like a grown-up to just leave it alone, move on with her and that she's been messaging me to try again with me for a whole month. He didn't care about that. He continued to talk crap, threat me and brag to me. Even though I'm young, I stay away from social media. I don't like to immature drama and I prefer keeping a relationship to myself instead of showing it off for everyone. I have what they call an old soul. It's just crazy to me that I was with a quiet, fun girl who I thought loved me. We had marriage plans, had her future kids' names ready, had so much fun together, to a person who lies about me for her to get sympathy from others and possibly putting my family and myself in danger. I don't understand how, after two months of moving on, the fair partner messaged me out of nowhere bashing me and bragging to me. I completely ignored, blocked her for over a month. Friends told me my ex started sharing posts throwing shade at me, sharing posts of how she's been treated better in a short amount of time versus three years, which happens to be the amount of time we were together. I'm still moving on, but I feel like there's always something going on. Edit. Another reason why she felt like she didn't see the relationship working is because I refused to move out with her into an apartment while we had a whole finished basement to ourselves rent-free, and I always mentioned to her that it felt very early to move on like that together. Another thing is every time before when I would tell her maybe we should split, she would get very emotional and say that she had nowhere to go and if I left her, she would kill herself while holding pills in her hand. All the time. Now she freely walked away with no emotion or suicide threats when I kicked her out. The community's reaction comes from Tertiary 78. She didn't get mad until she got fully rejected. She's using the affair partner to get to you and it's working. She has serious mental health issues and it shows. Close this chapter of your life and ignore all of it. Ignore Grey Rock, block any of her attempts to get to you. How did you not give her the love she wanted? All you did was coddle her and take care of her. But that's not a relationship. You let her get away with so much BS. She had you wrapped around her little finger, and still did, even after the breakup. Ask your friends not to share what she says to you anymore. Block both of them. Don't even worry about what she's doing. Move on. Update. X messaged at me after months of no contact. So my ex had messaged me recently after months of no contact. I was getting a lot better, not feeling so hurt. So she messaged me just accusing me of getting into her accounts and deleting photos of us we had together. I don't know her account info in the first place and I want nothing to do with her anymore. So why would I do that? She didn't say it nicely either. You would think even after what she did, she would at least ask nicely. I don't know if I should reply to her and let her know that I didn't even do that. I don't even want to think about her, that's how much I'm disgusted of her. I really think the affair partner might have done it, and she thinks it was me. Or maybe it didn't even happen and she tried to get me to speak to her. I don't even know. I just don't like sitting here thinking that she thinks I did it, when I haven't even tried thinking about her in the first place for months. So to even do all that is something I wouldn't do. What should I do? Just leave it alone and continue with my life? Or should I let her know, even though I don't want to speak to her? B.S. I do have her blocked on everything and she reached out to me in a different way. I don't want to say which way because I don't want her to see this post knowing it's about her. Ninja Gecko from the community has a thought. It's a trap. It's probably a lie designed to draw you in. To reset your journey of recovery back to zero. Why? Because she can. She's not worth the response. Don't take the bait. Block and forget. Deedled Rocks responds. Do not respond. The worst type of breadcrumbing and hoovering. I repeat. Do not respond. One more comment from Public Star 7977 Do absolutely nothing. That is what exes of either gender do. It's to mess with your head and exercise some level of control or power over you. If you reply in any way, shape, or form, it just is endorsing their power over you. Leave it alone. Don't get involved. She's just trying to get you so you'll talk to her and she can try to wiggle her way back in. Let it go. Let her go. Do not respond. She's effing with you mentally. You're still wrapped around your little finger. Unwrap yourself. What do you make of all this? Thank you for joining us today in our space. Like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. We'd hate for you to miss out. And if you want to listen to more stories from me, check out Our Lounge, where I feature a larger variety of non-cheating related stories. See you there.